how to pray. An emergency prayer of just calling out to the Lord is, is uh, it does the trick. <laughs> but it is good to have a structure that you can fall back upon. If you just remember the word part, P-A-R-T, part, it's really easy, right? Okay. When we do our part, God does his part, and he always does his part. And when we do our part, they come together, see? And then it's like an electrical connection. When, if here's God, and we want to get connected, we can't stay over here. We have to get over there. <laughs> so we have to do our part and connect to his part. <laughs> And then the electricity can flow and his, his life and his um, light can enter into our lives and do his magic. So, and really his magic is just called life. It is life. It's the most powerful force in the world, him, her, it, whatever you want to call that force, the life force. So in the word part, if we remember the word part, P-A-R-T, praise, admit that you're powerless without him, request for what you need, and T, thank him. You thank him in the expectation that he will answer your prayer, trusting he will do something. He will do something. Now, sometimes we ask for something, and we, we don't know how to ask correctly because, or we don't know what to ask for. So we can always ask for guidance. We can always ask for thy will to be done. And in confidence, knowing that God's will is always for our good. God does not want bad things for his children. We are sometimes so afraid that we are not supposed to get something good. And why is that? Maybe because of early childhood experiences, because our earthly parents treated us wrong or other people in our families treated us wrong. But they are not God. And God always has our best interest at heart. So we don't have to be afraid of asking and expecting good. What we need is trust. We need to learn to trust God. Trusting is extremely important, but it's not the act of trusting. It's who are you trusting? <laughs> because we know we can trust God. Now, that's the thing. People misunderstand. They misunderstand God's intentions uh, for people's intentions. They misunderstand what God wants, see? And then therein lies another conflict. Our self-will versus our higher will, because... Our higher will always wants what's best. God, God's will always can see what will really be good for us. And what, and, and what does that mean? When we're little kids, we said, I want candy, 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 candy. I want the candy. And your mother says, no, you must eat your vegetables and your whatever it is else you have to eat. You have to eat your dinner first. And you go, me, who wants the dinner? I want the veg I want the candy. So, but your mother knows best. <laughs> and your father knows best. Because they want you to be healthy. They don't want you to be sick. And so a lot of times our childish will wants opposes what God wants. <laughs> and we have to be able to, you know, realize that, hmm, well, in the long run, I guess I'll be healthier. And so Submitting to God's will is actually a, 
a wonderful thing because it'll open the door to your greatest happiness. Well, I want you to bring up your issues that you're facing. And I have another one that we're going to bring up next time.